So that was the Falklands. And uh, before that, two years before that, we had the Iranian embassy. And the Iranian embassy was, uh, I, I was on the top floor going in from the roof. But it's all part of being the team, you know? But I had the job of uh, lowering the explosive above the stairwell, you know, the big glass dome above the stairwell. And that was basically the distraction explosion. So if anybody watches the Iranian embassy, little BBC clip on YouTube, um, there's a big explosion and there's some uh, journalists going, that was a bomb, that was a bomb. And then you then see the lads climbing out, you know, the, the, the four lads of the 30,000 that climb out onto the, the front balcony that everybody's seen. People call us special forces. We're not special. We're called the Special Air Service and the Special Boat Service. When I joined the Special Air Service, it was the Special Boat Section. Then it became the Special Boat Squadron. And then it became the Special Boat Service. All the same guys, great guys, just different names. You know, Makes, it doesn't make any odds. It's all the same guys. None of them are special. None of us were special. And being a boat troop guy, I worked a lot with the SPS. We're all the same. We wear a different cap badge. We've got the same role, the same job. We get on with it. We're two tiny units. Most operationally, we're normally combined anyway, because there's not enough of us to go around. One lot is from the Navy slash Royal Marines. The other lot's from the Army. That's back in my day. It's all different, as you know now, because it's a combined selection, which in my view, should have happened decades ago. I spent a year down at Poe, and uh, I was a staff sergeant at the time, and I had an absolute ball. The SPS lads welcomed me with open arms. And, uh, and one of the things I tried to do, but failed, was bring the two units together and suggest a combined selection. Because what was going on was, it was two completely different types of selection. So there was a mindset between the two that was slightly different. And an SPS lad, if he was rank conscious, could pass the SPS selection, go into the SPS, stay two years, go back into the Marine system, get his lance corporal, get his corporal, get his sergeant, and then go back into the SPS. And all the SPS lads that remained there might be corporals. And he's jumped them and come back in. In the SAS, the time, this is when I was in, the time you decide that you want to leave the, S, the SAS, you lose all your rank. And if you come back, you do selection again and you start again at Trooper. And I believe that that was right for both units. That was the way to be. A, it makes people think twice about leaving. And B, we're all on the same page, you know? So, so that was going on. And uh, a quick story about my time down in the SPS. Great rivalry. Of course, I'm the minimum number one. I'm, I'm on my own. So I'm having to take all this crap from the SPS lads every morning. You guys do fizz in the morning before breakfast. That killed me. I cannot do fizz before breakfast. That's not an army thing. We need a big fat English breakfast in us before we do anything. 
So I'm getting up in the morning, meeting up with my SPS buddies and getting the pants run off me and then back again, or we're going swimming or we're doing some, you know, gym work or, or whatever it is. But, you know, everybody gets their chance. So one morning it was my turn and I, you know, I, I kept it simple. We went for a, like a six mile run. We came back and uh, warming up exercises to begin with, warming down exercises. This wasn't long after the Falklands and I had the Marines, uh, the SPS lads bending down, touching their toes, coming up slowly, coming up, coming up and standing like that. So I had a half circle of Marines around me, all with their hands up, and I just turned around and walked away. And then they chased me all over pool. Anyway, <laughs> it was all a laugh and a joke. We had a couple of beers that night. We're all giggling about it. And then a couple of months later, um, this SBS lad says, oh, Bob, uh, do you fancy going for a run tonight after work? I'm like, yeah, that'd be great, mate. And he, he was a really good runner. And... Uh, so he meets me outside the sergeant's mess, which is where I was staying. And we go running out of, uh, you know, Hamworthy and out into the cuds. And, and, I, and I'm looking at my watch and, and we're doing about seven minute miling pace up and down. And uh, I'm just hanging on to him. And then we turn up at this house and he stops at the gate. And I'm like, what are you doing, mate? And we're 10 miles away. And he goes, uh, I live here. See ya. <laughs> so that was payback for my uh, <laughs> stretching exercises. <laughs> so fantastic stuff, you know. And I had an absolute ball down there. I learned so much. And uh, I actually came back and I had a vision that there shouldn't be a, there should only be a boat trip in Hereford to move the other troops ashore or to do light reccees and stuff like that. We shouldn't be at the extent of what, or we shouldn't be trying to do what the SPS are doing because they're streaks ahead. That's their job. That's their bread and butter. They're O2, they're oxygen diving. And for those that don't know, that's diving subsurface where you're not, popping bubbles up to the surface. It's a rebreathing unit and there are no bubbles at all. It's, uh, so, you know, you can swim in, nobody from the surface can see you. We shouldn't be doing that. That takes a lot of effort. The SPS are on the coastline. If they want to spend three hours doing that, they're there, they can do it. We live in Hereford, we're landlocked. It's like a landlocked county, you know? It's crazy that we, we just don't have time to do this stuff, you know? And uh, so we were forever chasing the error. And, uh, you know, I just felt that the powers to be, the lads are all the same. You know, we had SBS lads coming up to us for anti-terrorist stuff, and we were all working together. We were all gelling. We would go down to pool. We'd, we'd do the same with them. We would gel. But it was a hierarchy. Those in charge of the Navy and the Royal Marines, those in charge of the Army and uh, HQ Special Forces, they're the ones that are trying to, to write their own history, you know? The lads just want to get on with the job. We're all the same. I don't give a damn if we combined, you know, we all wore a green berry with a wing dagger or, you know, or, a, a, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. We're all the same. We've all got a job to do. We need to do it to the best of our ability. And we're not doing that when the headsheds are having a pissing match against each other. <laughs> 